praise the name of the Lord. I am uh, excited to share with you God's word this day, and I really count it a privilege. Uh, but first, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that uh, you give us an opportunity to listen to you and to listen to your word. And I pray that in this time, whoever is listening in, watching in, Lord, wherever they are, some in the comfort of their living rooms, some uh, in various places, I ask that you'll speak to them in clarity, you'll speak to them in simplicity, that each one of us will have a portion of a message that comes from God Almighty. And so I ask that you'll only use me as an instrument to deliver your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You're very, very welcome. Praise the name of the Lord. I am Reverend Gerald Ayebale Kiyomuhendo. And by the grace of God, I am the one to bring God's word to us this, this day. And I want to talk to us on the subject, set your hearts and minds on things above. Set your hearts and minds on things above. As we continue in this season, what I have called a hibernating season, where there is not a lot of activity, where we are locked up in homes, locked up in different places, I am very sure that our minds are so engaged. And so I want to begin by asking us soul-searching questions. In this time of the lockdown, what have you been thinking about the most? In this time of the lockdown, what have you been thinking about the most? The other question that I want to ask really is, uh, have you been thinking about things above, things in heaven, things in the afterlife, or things that are temporary and things that are here and now? And as you think about that, I want us to focus on the passage that was read to us from Colossians chapter 3 uh, verse 1 all the way to, to verse 10. And I want to read to us the first two verses. Listen to what it says. That since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Praise the name of the Lord. So in this passage, the writer who happens to be Paul is asking us to set our minds on things above. And as he does this, he qualifies it because we have been died, we have died and been buried with Jesus Christ. Listen to what it says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Now the, his audience is the Colossian believers and he seems to be saying that the Colossians had died and been raised with Jesus Christ. But we all know that the Colossians that he's writing to are normal human beings like you and I and yet he says they have been raised to life which means they have also died with Jesus Christ. How is that possible that they died and were raised to life with Jesus Christ? And I'm going to tell you how. In order for you to understand that the Colossian believers indeed had died with Christ and been raised to life with Jesus Christ, you need to bring into perspective Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 4. Listen to what it says. It says, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So Paul writes to the Colossians and uh, says you have died with Christ and been raised with Christ. And to the Romans, he qualifies it by saying that once you have faith in Jesus Christ, if you believe in Jesus Christ and are baptized, then you have been nailed to the cross with Christ, buried with him and been raised to life 
with Jesus Christ. And I think this is good news to know that if I believe in Jesus Christ, I have I've repented of my sins, then I have been nailed on the cross, been buried with him, and been raised to life again with Jesus Christ. And this has precisely three implications. Number one, it means to me and to us, all of us out there that have put their faith in Jesus Christ, that access to my life has been denied. The first thing, the first implication I want to say to us in the fact that we should set our minds and hearts on things above is that access to my life, access to your life has been denied to anybody else except Christ himself. He says in verse 3, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. We have died with Christ after believing in him. We've been raised to life because of our faith in him. And then that means that our life is hidden into Jesus Christ. This is the good news with the fact that our lives are hidden in Christ. The good news is that we are concealed and are safe in Jesus Christ. That because we believe in Jesus Christ and therefore our lives hidden in Jesus Christ, there is limited or no access unto us. That I am secure in Jesus Christ. Nothing can touch me. Not witchcraft, not demons. Nothing is able to access me. Jesus Christ is the password. So if it is not Jesus Christ, then there is no access. I am safe where I am. And even talking in the context of, or the context of what we are going through, it also means that actually coronavirus cannot access you. Sickness cannot access you. And of course you'll ask me, but Reverend Gerald, how about believers who are falling sick? How about believers who have caught coronavirus? How is that? I take you back into the words of Jesus Christ when he says, do not fear he who kills the flesh, but rather fear the one who kills both the flesh and the soul. What coronavirus does is to hurt your body, but you are hidden in the one that has access to your soul. So I can fall sick, but my soul is intact because my life is hidden in Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So we set our hearts and minds in things above. And the implication is when we do that, our access to our lives has been hidden. Nothing can touch you, child of God. Nothing can reach you, believer, unless it's been allowed and given permission by God, knowing how he's going to deal with it. I think that is very good news. But the second thing, the second implication in setting our hearts and minds on things above, the second implication on the fact that we've been buried with Jesus Christ, nailed to the cross with him, and raised to new life is that we ought to manifest God's presence daily. We should manifest God's presence daily. Listen to verse 4. It says, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. After the resurrection, Christ appeared gloriously. And because we are raised to life with him, even us, we are called to rise with him gloriously. And so wherever we are, we represent Jesus Christ. We are hidden in him, remember. We've been raised with him. And so where Christ is, I am. Where I am, Christ is. So then that means that I am Christ's hands. I am Christ's legs. If there are people that need to hear good news, then I am going to speak for Jesus Christ that good news. If there are people that need food, then I'm going to deliver that food because I am Jesus's hands. Wherever we are, we should manifest the glory of God. And when we do that, then we are setting our hearts and minds on things above. Praise the name of the Lord. 
is setting your minds and hearts on things above is to say that when people see me, they have seen Jesus Christ because I'll move with compassion towards them like Jesus would move with compassion towards them. I would meet their needs like Christ would meet their needs. I would love them unconditionally like Christ would love them unconditionally, manifesting the glory of the Lord. It is to say your kingdom come here on earth wherever I am, your will be done wherever you plant me. Setting our hearts and minds on things above. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three, to set our hearts and minds on things above is to seek more of heaven than earth. It is to seek more of heaven. It is no no, no more of me and more of Jesus Christ. It is to say, I want to see Jesus more and increasing and less of me. I diminish as Christ increases. It is to seek more of heaven than earth. And in verse 1 and 2, it is very clear. It says to us in the passage we read, that set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Set your hearts. When you read this phrase, set your hearts and minds on things above, it sounds beautiful. It's a good thing to even share with believers and say, me, I have set my heart on things above. But friends, I can tell you, it can be tough. It can be difficult for you to think about things of heaven, for you to do only things in regard to eternity, in regard to the kingdom of God. Because we live in this life, sometimes it's almost impossible. We live here, we still have to pay bills, we still have to go to work, some of you go to school, some of you have cares of this world, a number of them. I know that I'm talking you, to you right now, and some of you are in business, and you're thinking about your clients, you're thinking about your customers, and so it's sounds unrealistic for me to say, set your minds and hearts on things above alone. It sounds unrealistic. It sounds not normal or natural. But here is what Paul says to us in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. There is a sense of pressing on. There is a sense of, of effort. There is a sense of intention. You don't sit back and think you will think about things above or you will set your heart on things above. There is intention that is required. There is effort that is required that every other time when you catch yourself thinking and dwelling on things of the world, you are quick to say to yourself, hey, I should be thinking about things above. You put in effort. You, you make arrangements to make sure that the things you are focusing on, you prioritize heavenly things. Yes, I have to work hard. Yes, I have to make ends meet. But at the end of the day, where does your priority lie? Given an opportunity to choose, what would you choose? Would you choose Jesus Christ or you would choose the cares? of every day. I think according to Paul, we have a call this day to press on. We have a call to prioritize. We have a call to say, Lord, this is good, and yes, rightly so, because we are in this world, but heaven is better. And so rather than focus on this that is of now and temporary, I will focus on the after, which is also permanent. Praise the name of the Lord. And I can tell you, the Bible gives us various examples of men and women that struggled with this. I mean, we read about the rich young ruler 
who came to Jesus Christ and clearly he comes to Jesus and he has a desire for things above. He wants to set his heart on things above, but he also has a desire for things of this life. And so Jesus says, go sell everything. Go forget, sell everything and give it out. The Bible says the young man went away sad. He was not willing to let go of his fat wallet. He was not willing to let go of his material things. And so when Christ suggested that set your heart on things above by letting go of your comfort, he went away sad. And I'm very sure that many of us are caught in such places many times. We are vulnerable there is a man that you know very well, Judas Iscariot. He followed Jesus for three years. He was with him, ate with him. They ministered together. Judas Iscariot had abandoned his very job to follow Jesus Christ. But at the end of the story, we recognize that he was following Jesus for wrong reasons. At the end of the day, his heart, his mind was not on things above. His heart, his mind was on things of the earth, was on things of here. He probably thought Jesus was going to become king here. He was going to be probably prime minister or whoever. And his, his disappointment was finding out that Jesus is talking of a kingdom that is not of here. So many of us are vulnerable. Sometimes we get tired and we are tempted to think about things of fear. But Paul in this passage, as you heard it read, uses strong language. He says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Put to death. He's saying, chop off mercilessly. He's saying, get rid of quickly get rid of do not dilly dally with the things of here and he particularly says your earthly nature sexual immorality impurity lust evil desires and greed verse 8 and 9 he talks about anger rage malice slander and filthy language and lying he says chop off put to death things of the earthly nature. He uses strong words, put to death, you must get rid of. We should not feel nice about them and we want to harness them and we want to, you know, feel sorry about things of the earth. Feel, and you know, you make it yours, my anger, you know, I would have loved to do it the other way, but you see, this is me. Chop off! He says, put to death your earthly nature, so you are able to set your heart and minds on things above. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, when you read verse 12, you get to realize what he's talking or referring to as things above. Verse 12 says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility, gentleness, and patience. I am sure this shocks you because things of the earth are very clear. But heavenly things you'd want to think maybe going to church many times, maybe praying and fasting, doing more religion. And yet Paul says it's actually compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. So in this, kind, in this time of the lockdown, I want to encourage you to set your heart and your mind on things above. I want to encourage you to use this lockdown as an opportunity to think more of heaven. There is an encouragement that you are hidden in Jesus Christ, that your life cannot be accessed by any powers of darkness, cannot be accessed even by your enemies because you are hidden in Christ together in God Almighty. That is our refuge. That is our hiding place. There we are safe. There we are secure. So it doesn't matter how tough the surrounding is. What is most important is my life. 
and your life is hidden in Jesus Christ. Access has been denied. Only Christ has the password. But also that we should manifest the glory of God wherever we go. And after manifesting the glory of God wherever we go, set your hearts and your minds on things above. Think Jesus Christ. Talk Jesus Christ. Read about Jesus Christ. Tell people about Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, think about heaven. Think about life in the afterlife. Think about heaven. Oh, heaven. Oh, heaven. Yes, Lord. The grace to always remember that all these things can come to an end. The grace to know that technology can be limited the grace to know that science can be limited. Only God is unlimited. And so we can set our hearts and minds on things that are above. And in verse 17, he concludes the matter when he says, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Friends, whatever you do, remember heaven. Whatever you do, remember God. Whatever God has given you to do, whether it's parenting, maybe you are a lawyer, you are a business person, whatever you are doing, setting your heart and your mind on things above means whatever I do must be saved through scripture. I must first ask myself the question, what would Jesus Christ do? So in this lockdown, do you want to do a lot of devotion? Do you want to read your Bible a little more? Do you want to pray with your family? Do you want to do things of heaven? Do you want to set your mind? Do you want to go off the usual? Do you want to, to be dominated by heavenly thoughts? Compassion. Do you want to look at your neighbor with compassion? Do you want to treat your maid, your, your shamba boy, whoever it is, with compassion, with kindness, with joint, gentleness? Because that is what Jesus Christ approves. It's a call for us not to be worried about businesses that are collapsing, not to worry about the economies that are going down, not to worry about anything to do with the now but to spend most of our time, a lot of our time, thinking heaven because we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Here we are strangers and visitors. And so I want to pray with you, but even as I pray with you, the encouragement is that your life is hidden in Jesus Christ. You are called to manifest his glory wherever you are. And thirdly, set your heart Set your mind on things above. Can I just pray with you? Lord, I thank you for the people that are viewing in, the people that are listening in on this day, in this particular hour. Lord, I know that in this lockdown, I know that in this season, it's tough for us because we are flesh and blood. But hey, thank you that in the midst of that, we are reminded we've been buried with you. We've been nailed on the cross with you, buried, and been raised to life with you. And so that gives us a new status of being hidden in you. Jesus, in you we are safe. And so I pray for every worried soul out there, worried woman, worried man, worried child. Some people are worried about their academics. They are worried about their businesses. Lord, I pray that you who has spoken to us this day to say our lives are hidden in you will they know that they are safe and secure Lord give us grace in this time every person that is listening in wherever they are Lord you know there are limitations but you also know what they are able to do I pray that they will manifest your glory in those households in those places where they are I pray that whoever sees them will see you whatever we, they do will manifest your glory. And so, Lord, I also pray that we'll cast our cares on you. And Lord, we'll not be worried or anxious about anything, but instead focus on you. Because when we do, we know we are safe and all is well. Thank you, Lord. We honor you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you as you set your hearts and minds on things above.
bless you.